What's up, nerds? Welcome to NGR's Power Block, our all Nintendo show. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, that chocolate-flavored masterpiece, Edward Varnell. Oh, please, second Death Setsu collection, please come to America. I want to <laughs> Oh, man. Hello, everybody. Ed, Ed, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, dude, I'm so, I'm super hyped to be here. Like, literally, I had a discussion with uh, Larry Giver from World One One Podcast, and we talked about a particular title that would fit the Switch. We'll, we'll probably talk about when we get into our discussion. And it literally made me super hyped. Uh, yeah, like, I, some of this stuff that came out over the weekend, like, interviews and stuff, that we're going to talk about, like that's kind of our our major topic. I would go out on a limb and say this is going to be a shorter episode, but you never know when we start talking E three predictions, it's it could go on a, a, a while. So that's like our major topic. But like when all these things start coming out, that Nintendo is going to have a major E three this year. It got me really really excited, and like not that last year wasn't exciting because we saw Zelda and. Oh. You know, that whole thing with Zelda there, Zelda Amusement Park at E3 was pretty, pretty amazing. But can I, can I tell you that I stay glued to both, pre, both days of their live stream? I'm like, even yeah. though I, some of it I had to miss when they were showing off games in the uh, particular art. I got to look it back up, but the, there's an RPG game that's coming to 3DS. That you like kind of go to time ago. It's like not a rogue game, but it's like a dungeon crawl almost. It made me super happy. And when I found out that it's, I think it's from the creator or one of the worker people who worked on Secret of Mana, um, super stoked. And so hopefully that makes a splash. Uh, but yeah, I stay glued to it. And I'm going to be glued to uh, the TV, the internet, wherever I can see. Because I really want to see what Nintendo has for E3. Because last year was just, last year was so mind-blowing to me. Um, and I like, and I kind of like their live stream. But hopefully they go back to a Nintendo Direct style. So we can have more discussion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I'm... I'm super excited. I need to. I wish Nintendo would like announce what date they're going, and they always go on Tuesday. I know that, but like Microsoft changed times this year, and Sony changed times this year. So I wonder if Nintendo is going to try to change times this year. No, uh, they're still going to be Tuesday at on Tuesday. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, once they come out with like the official announcements and stuff, I'll start requesting off dates from work for that. But um, yeah, because they normally because. Normally it's nine o'clock their time. I think nine o'clock wherever they're at in uh so yeah, it, it should be like eleven o'clock my time and I think twelve o'clock your time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm super pumped because I think we should do a pow block live on Tuesday. Yes. Like just just like watching the like you um just kind of like NGR did with the switch reveal. Yes. Uh, where we just kind of watch and react to everything that's happening. And then uh, afterwards, we'll talk about it and, and stuff. So uh, we'll have like a, like a half hour. We'll, we'll do it live. I'll set up a NGR switch or switch Twitch page. And like we'll do it live there and uh, like a half hour pre-show. And then like we'll do a watch along during the show. And yes. then afterwards, we'll have a have a power block episode emergency episode for uh, I'm, I'm let you, letting you guys know right now i'm going to be saying yes a lot and i'm going to be screaming i'm going to freak out because <laughs> because I, I feel like whatever they show it's going to be so fun and funny and if people feel disappointed it's video games. Sometimes you don't get it. You don't get it on the first try. Sometimes you do. Who knows what they're going to be showing? But I, I'm super cannot wait for this and and watching it. Like I'm, I'm even. I'm probably going to start planning my snack attacks on like what snacks do I need to get <laughs> to watch the presentation? Because you know I, I'm going to be doing that for Microsoft, Sony, EA, and Ubisoft. That um, I'm going to be having snacks. You know taking notes and be be ready to podcast I'm, I'm probably gonna be hopefully doing like seven to eight nine shows <laughs> that week for e3 um 
but I'm I'm super stoked for it. Oh, yeah, everybody, it is in three more months. Well, actually, probably about two once uh, April hit. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited for for E3. I I know I'm off that Monday, and uh, I already requested off day zero, like that m- Sunday night. So I'll probably mm. I'll probably work during the day that day, but I'll have off that night when when Bethesda and uh, Microsoft go, and then Monday I'll okay. I'll watch that stuff, and then Tuesday is going to be all Nintendo stuff. So I'm 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 pretty excited, man. This I think. I think this E3 for Nintendo in general is going to be even bigger because everybody is so excited for Switch. And it's not just yes. like, you know, people are actually expecting something from Nintendo this year as opposed to like last year was just Zelda and the year before was, you know, a little bit of Zelda and then Star Fox and, and stuff like that. You know, it's I think I think people are expecting a lot from Nintendo and that has people excited. Uh, yes, and I which, think, which means it's going to be a very different E3. Like, are they actually going to have a conference? Are they going to have a direct before and then have a conference? Like, I kind of feel like they're going to show up. I feel like they're going to actually have a conference. Um, do they need to? Would we like to see? I mean, I think I, I think don't think they, they need to, but I think the m- amount of hype that mm-hmm. Nintendo has right now and the way people are excited for Switch, I think. Reggie coming out on stage and just totally winning over the crowd at E3. I think that yeah. would be a huge momentum boost for them. Like keep the momentum going as opposed to a Nintendo Direct. Not that I don't like the Direct, the Directs, but like, or they could even do like a mixture uh, of like pre recorded stuff, you know, to, to enter the show on the big screens. And then Reggie walks out and then they'll show gameplay footage of the games and, and, and stuff like that like they could do they could do almost like a live direct from e3 like pre-recorded stuff reggie walks out pre-recorded stuff you know bill trennan walks out pre-recorded stuff uh you know takahashi walks out you know all these different things yeah. to do to to uh, uh make make it exciting for nintendo fans uh i think that doing that would be awesome well, or or I kind of probably will break it up. Do the Nintendo Direct for games that's been announced and like given release dates and and everything is because they announced like they're working on new IPs uh, for games. Do a press conference for that for the new IP stuff, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and then be able to talk about it. You know, of course, talking about it live and show some gameplay for it um and probably make them both like f- what, 45 minutes each yeah well, yeah 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 i could because see you know because uh, you know that if they do a nintendo direct sometimes or even a live one sometimes it don't start at nine give it like about 10 five to ten minutes and then it'll roll out but if they're going to do a live like press conference for like the new games you know all out uh like that yeah like 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 do one in the morning and then like in the afternoon or a little bit like in the evening before uh the show closes or something then do a press conference for those new ips like keep everybody in suspense and then wednesday do the live stream of all the new games and current games like break it up like they are like party because i because e3 probably is the, the thursday so they had they should be able to cover have wednesday and thursday cover of coverage for their games yeah yeah i could i could see that or doing like a a pre-conference direct that's like a half yeah. hour with like highlights of like games that they've already announced like mario and 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 Octopath Traveler and uh, maybe throw some third party in there like FIFA and NBA 2K and, yeah. and Skyrim and you know maybe Splatoon if it's not out yet. Uh, I yeah they could I feel like they could do something like that too. Yeah. So, but uh, before we get into the main topics of today, what have you been playing, Ed? Um, I've been playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, played a little bit more of Pokemon Sun. Um. 
I played a little bit of Breath of the Wild, but I kind of. I think you're actively avoiding playing Zelda. This hurts I, my I, feelings. And I, I because I'm playing Horizon, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get done with that because I like I said I want to jump into um, Breath of the Wild, and I am going to jump back into it. I think I may be doing that soon because I I'm not hating Horizon. Or I don't want to hate on Horizon, but I'm I don't like the shop mechanic. I don't like the trader mechanic. I I have problems with that. If I'm sent, if I'm able to go somewhere and you know collect items, because in Horizon you have to collect items from the dinosaurs uh, that you defeat. But you also got to collect your metal shards. Now, your metal shards in this game is used as currency and for you to be able to fix your bow, you know, make new arrows and stuff. Well, the problem is, is that if you're trying to get a particular item or, or a spear or whatever or arrow, I mean, a, a bow, you have to have you have to meet certain requirements. And if you can't, if you don't have that item, you can set it as a quest to go get that item and they'll tell you where it's at. Well, I was trying to get one item in particular uh, and they sent me on the quest. Well, from where the city is at to where the quest is at, it's a long way. Well, you have to buy fast travel. You can't do it like the uh, Breath of the Wild, where you can just fast travel anywhere at any time for for most of it. This game, you actually have to have an item to fast travel. So now you have to spend your shards to buy that item to do fast travel. Yeah. So, so I go and the thing that I need is from a particular enemy. And because that particular big enemy has a long, uh, uh, a long energy bar, then regular dinosaurs and stuff, or or the enemy, uh, whoever you want to hunt, it's it's going to be because you don't have the right equipment to bring them down. You can have all the arrows that you want to, but that's still taking more of your currency, more of your resources. And you have to have enough to be able to hit them in the right spot and then be able to make sure that you dodge or not seeing because they if they see you, they'll come and hunt you and they have to you have to fight them and survive. And if you get hit by this particular enemy, majority of your health is almost gone. And now if you don't have the resources to refill your health, you have to start that whole fight over. And this fight could take up to 35 to 40 minutes. Now, this is the problem with that. You still are on a chance-based system that even if you defeat that enemy, you won't get the item that you need. So now you got to spend another 35, 45 minutes, hopefully be able to find that enemy again and fight him another time to get that one piece. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I I know what you're saying. I haven't really gotten that far in Horizon to like actually like have that problem because, mm -hmm. you know, it came out the same week as Zelda and Zelda is literally the only game I've been sinking significant time into since it came out. Uh but yeah, I that I do understand that frustration and it kind of sucks and like I'm kind of <clears throat> at that point in in Zelda right now where like you need certain items to upgrade your armor and like it's not super tedious because there's uh like the the items aren't that hard to find or get right. except for like except for like the ancient cores when you're fighting uh uh guardians like uh I <laughs> I I there's so many things I wish I knew before I started playing Zelda what not to do when I started that like now the items that I've sold to get rupees to get this armor these other armor sets yeah like I've sold so many like guardian parts that like I'm struggling to find ancient cores now 
Yeah. And, and like I need that for the ancient armor that uh you can find in the game and like it just it sucks cuz like you need guardian parts to fu- to buy that armor set. And so yeah. like I I'm at that point in Zelda where like I w- it's not that it's like super frustrated it's not that I'm mad that it's a bad game mechanic. I just wish these are things I would have known before I started. But I mean, I had to jump into Zelda when it came out. I had okay. to. Like, and I'm at the point where I don't want to, I feel like I don't really want to do the side quests anymore in Horizon because they're just so tedious and so long. I do want to do the dungeon, so I'm going to try to do as much as I can, but I'm not ready to put the controller down and return the Zelda chest yet. But if it gets to a point that I have to and I will, I would have no problem putting Horizon back on the back burner and finishing up Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because when I know, when I see that game, I'm going to be like, okay, what do I want to do? Do I go shrines? Do I go to the next uh, god? Or what do I want to do? Do I want to cook stuff and sell it? Like... It will be up to me on what I want to do next because I have stuff planned. Like I'm looking, I'm looking for more shrines, but I think I'm ready to move on to the next part of the story. Yeah, yeah. I uh, in Zelda, like I have a little routine now. Like as soon as I turn the game on, like I scan all my amiibo, get all the uh, items I can from from my Zelda amiibo, and actually, it's super exciting because there's an infographic that came out. On like what each amiibo gives you. Yeah. And there's three unreleased 30th anniversary Zelda amiibo. There's a Majora's Mask one, Twilight Princess one, and a Skyward Sword one. And they all give you new armor. Oh. That cool. isn't in the game. Like the Majora's Mask uh 30th anniversary one gives you the fierce deity armor. Uh the Twilight Princess one gives you, I mean, the Smash Brothers one gives you that same armor. It's the the armor of Twilight. And then Skyward Sword gives you the, the armor of the sky. So those are like big time armor pieces that I'm going to have to get the amiibo to do that. But my routine is I scan all my amiibo, get all the items. Hopefully I'll get the armor sets because I'm still missing the Tunic of the Wind uh, from Wind Waker. And the trousers of time which is mm-hmm. the ocarina of time set and then i have all of the amiibo set up to now see um, i got i got both two i got both two links the one that yeah. came packaged with princess zelda and then the first two link that came out yeah so i wonder if i could use both of them because i haven't used no you amiibos can. in the game yet you can use both of them At, like and what and like uh, I still I can't find. I need a Sheik amiibo and I need a Ganon amiibo. Because I have Sheik. Ganon. The Ganon one gives you an awesome sword, the Sword of the Seven Sages, which is rumored to be an unbreakable item. Uh, I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. And Sheik gives you the second mask for the uh, Sheikah armor, which is just like the the mouth covering and then the headpiece, so you I actually think- look like Sheik. I think I have both. I know I have Sheik, and I think I believe I have Ganon too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, did you did you find it at the at a particular place that I work at also? Um, because if you can't find it at that place, and I have it at my place of employment, I'll pick it up for you Friday. And um, ship it out. I don't know. I haven't really checked, but I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be going to GameStop tomorrow to pick up some Switch games anyway. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna check. But that my GameStop has a ton of used amiibo, and I they I know they have a ton of Chic and like Toon Link amiibo. Uh, I don't. I mean, just because that people trade them in, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know about Ganon. Um, so, but. Back to my routine. I scan all my amiibo, get all the <laughs> items, cook all the food that I get from those amiibo, and I've I've found some recipes that will actually help boost. Like it'll give me full recovery, 
plus like defense boost and or attack boost. So like I've been doing those a lot lately and just uh-huh. just you know stocking up on those until because like I've finally got to a point where I'm like okay as soon as I upgrade at least one set of armor a little bit I'm going to go fight Ganon. Uh I found all 120 shrines. I've found all 18 memories. Uh there is a cu- I I need to finish some side quests I think uh first but I'm I'm ready to fight Ganon. I'm I'm prepared. I'm 110 hours in. It's time. <laughs> so, Not me. Zelda's, Zelda's been waiting hard <laughs> long enough. So I got she has to got two more areas to unlock and uh I still got some more shrines to find. <laughs> and then uh after I fight Ganon, I'll just, Zelda will be like my oh, I'm gonna go search for some Korok puzzles today for an hour and then I'll play something else. But like this this game is special. It is something special. And I know we say that every show, but like this game It it's taking gaming to a whole new level. It's uh yeah, it's 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 done something for me that uh you know, it's how do I want to say this? How do I how do I say this? It's reinvigorated my passion for games. Mm-hmm. And I know we talked about this a couple uh last week, I think the first show we did last week. Uh It doesn't feel monotonous. It doesn't feel the same as as like you know, when when you play PlayStation, let's look at their exclusives, for example. Uh, I know they're all telling different stories and they're all doing something a little bit different. The characters are all mm-hmm. are all unique and stuff, but The Last of Us, you're a realistic looking dude shooting stuff. Uncharted, you're a realistic looking dude shooting stuff. Killzone, you're a realistic looking dude shooting stuff. Horizon which is the most unique out of all those games. You're still in this kind of realistic looking world as a realistic looking character, ultimately shooting stuff. Granted, it's not with a gun, it's with a bow and arrow, but still, you know, you, you play Tomb Raider, which isn't an exclusive, but it's in the similar vein as those. And as much as I adore rise of the Tomb Raider, I think it's such an amazing game. You're still, shooting stuff and and crafting stuff the the way that like you would in in the last of us or horizon and it's just like this game is super refreshing and and different and looks different and feels different and and it's just it made me realize that like you know not every game has to be this super like super realistic hyper realistic showpiece to to be a great game and like exactly. this this art direction of this game is probably one of the uh, best i've ever seen and like you know some of it might be to the, the technical limitations of the system but nintendo always knows how to take their art directions in a in a different way to make the game feel and look special and and this game is no different the, the thing about a uh, breath of wild and I'm getting it back over to you, Corey, is that you find new things every day. Whether you discover it on your own or you're seeing people talk about it or seeing videos. And you just be like, I didn't know I could do that. And, you know, I haven't had that feeling in the game in a long time that everybody is playing it and everybody's finding out something new. So, it's that old school lunch table sharing secrets with each other. Be like, oh, you did that at there? Oh, I did, I did this. And yeah, you could do, oh, I didn't know you could do. It's all of that. And it just, it makes it exciting because it, it you're building each other up to be a more experienced player in video games. And yeah. you don't really see that a lot in video games. There's just a expect to see that you know how to play a video game and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm I'm walking through this world and and I, I saw a video the other day that somebody 
use the time mechanic, cut down a tree, use the stasis mechanic, and you know hit the tree uh, like into the red so it was going as far and as fast as it possibly could. He jumped yeah. on it and went flying across this area, and he went like... I don't know, so far across the map that it probably would have taken him five minutes to walk that far. And he went there in like 10 seconds because this, that's how you cover ground super fast. <laughs> Can I tell you what's funny? Because uh, Nintendo showed that at their GDC talk too. Oh, really? Yep. And it was and because they were explaining about how they were using, able to use the Havoc of it, uh, Havoc uh, engine to do stuff like that. And I'm like, Dang, like, are y'all doing stuff that no one has thought of in the game? Because I I don't cut none of the trees down. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never, I cut cut them down all the time. I cut them down all the time because, like, if you need to do something at a specific time of day, as long as you have flint and a pile of wood, you can wait, you can sit wherever you want and wait for that time of day. Or, like, if you need to cook some food real quick you can just create that fire real quick it's weird with the food thing because you normally i'll be like okay let me see if i got fire arrows nope okay let me go see where the uh boko glints uh i probably still messed that up again uh where where they where they're doing to get it happy okay here's a fight i'm still in everything like oh there's a stick let me put it under ah Throw in my ingredients, cook, and then be on my merry way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so Zelda is just it's awesome. But other than that, I've been to to oh, oh, the big one I did this weekend was the Splatoon test fire. Yes. Talk I about totally it. forgot that that even happened. Yeah, man. I played uh I got home early enough from work on Friday and Saturday to play the Splatoon test fire. And it's, I mean, it's Splatoon. I mean, it, it feels almost identical to the first game. Uh, it's a little bit tighter. Actually, it feels really good. Um, I tested out all the weapons. Uh, I still prefer the paint roller just because I'm not great at shooting someone, but I can cover ground real quick in that uh-huh. game and uh, cover a lot of like the paint roller pretty much covers a huge lane for your team to to swim through because you know how you have to drop down in the paint to or the ink to refill your canister to keep going like the paint roller if you have a paint roller guy on your team you're solid because you can always refill your paint it's an easy way to cover ground and it's they made it this awesome weapon now to where like before you slam it like you can slam it down on the ground but if you hold it like i don't I don't remember this ever being in Splatoon 1 unless it was an upgrade for uh-uh. it. It wasn't. But like you you slam it down, but it slams down vertically and shoots like four paint balls, like huge paint globs out in front of you. So if there's an enemy in front of you, like it'll just it'll just hit them and it, it's awesome and before you start rolling and like if you roll up behind somebody with the paint roller, they're done. They're just toast. They can't turn around and get you. It's it's awesome. It was, uh, I played two different maps. Ah, uh, man, I forget what, what two maps they were, but, uh, they were both new maps and they were both pretty, uh, intricate, pretty, there's a lot of corners that you can hide in a lot of corners you can, uh, get to without people seeing you. If you're trying to cover paint, uh, still really good. I like it. Uh, there's no customization options in this game. No, or in the demo, no, anything like that. Uh, but it's still Splatoon. It's still really good. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about how much fun that they had. Uh, and people are still debating about motion control in this game. They were just like, if you're turning motion control off, do not be on my team. And some people were just like, I cannot do this motion control in this game and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you're not playing Mass Effect or Dramanda, <laughs> you're playing Splatoon uh, to the uh, test fire, and every, uh, it was. It seems like it was a very uh, big success. Everybody really had fun. A lot of people were getting like close to two thousand points and more. I was just like, wow. I'm like, y'all did this in an hour. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I turned off motion controls. Uh, I just I can't 
I can't. I was playing in handheld mode, and it's super hard to like. If I if I was playing on TV and I was playing with my pro controller, mm -hmm. I probably would have maybe kept it on for a little bit just to see. But every time I would like adjust myself in bed, like my whole screen would move off to a different direction. I was like, I got to turn this off for now. Like in handheld mode, I cannot do motion controls. But I mean, it felt solid. It felt like Splatoon. It's a good shooter and it's a good competitive game. Like I think Splatoon 2 is going to do very well. And oh, I yeah. think a, a lot of people that didn't play Splatoon 1 are going to be really surprised. And at work, I heard people talking about it because one of my friends got a Switch and a bunch of them, a bunch of kids, like 19, 20, 21, went over to like this this guy's house that were like, and he downloaded the Splatoon thing and they were all taking turns playing Splatoon. And it's weird seeing people who have been playing Battlefield and Call of Duty for the last six or seven years be excited for a game like Splatoon. It's yeah. it's crazy. It's it's hilarious. It's uh you know, so I mean Splatoon is is still awesome. I think it's uh one of the funnest shooters out there. You know, it it it's maybe simple, it may be uh you know, quote cartoony, but it's still it's still awesome. I can't I can't wait for Splatoon 2, honestly. And I think summer is the right time to come out. But I know for me, I'm gonna need. Uh, do I wonder what I need a pro controller for this one? Because I wonder how it feels with just having uh, the Joy Cons in your hand playing it. Oh no! Um, I, you could just connect it to the uh, to the grip. Yeah. Um. I. I honestly. Uh, I. I. <laughs> I refuse to use the Joy Cons in the grip. I need I my Joy Cons do not leave my system, and I I need that Pro Controller, man. I and I have an extra set of Joy Cons in the grip already for like an emergency third player. Mm -hmm. But um, man, I I need that Pro Controller, and that once you play with the Pro Controller, you're not want to go. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> Honestly, like. It, I mean, it's not, it doesn't feel bad. Like, it feels fine in your hands. It feels like a, it kind of feels like a wave bird, to be qu quite honest, a light yes. wave bird. Uh, but, you know, I just, I would rather have the pro controller because the sticks are a little off center from the face buttons and the D pad. And, like, it just, it feels more natural especially if you're an xbox player like it just feels way more natural to yeah. to play with that so and i um, think if you have like big big hands and stuff or you're a bigger person because you're like very tall Corey. you're you know yeah you, i'm a large person <laughs> i mean i mean you you look very tall and it looks like your hands need to be more comfortable like they can't really be too tight because they look like it you know maybe a little bit painful but it looks like if you could just have something like uh, like uh, the pro controller or number controller in your hand when you play it feels like it's more comfortable for you for your hands yeah and like i played i played splatoon with the gamepad on wii u obviously because i think you had to um yes and like that that felt okay i wish i could have used the pro controller but like the way the buttons are positioned on the pro controller for for uh, Splatoon One and the gamepad, like the stick sticks both up top, is very uh, unnatural. I think when you're playing a shooter, so like I mean the the face buttons and the D pad being on the same level, uh, as far as like Virtual Console games and mm -hmm. Mario 3D World and and New Super Mario Brothers, like that kind of stuff, it felt perfect. But in terms of a shooter that you need to control the camera, you need to be able to uh, be on a swivel at all times, like just felt unnatural. And I think maybe that's why Splatoon 2 feels better is because the controller layout is better. Uh, we, yeah, well, because I, I've already, I, when I play Splatoon, or when I do play Splatoon, I'll stick with the motion control because uh, it feels natural to me. Like I got used to it. Like it, it probably it didn't really take that long to uh to get where it's at to master it. I'm just like, okay, I see, and it works. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and I even I was even telling people on on um on the forum that uh motion control for the arrows when I'm shooting in Breath of the Wild. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, I have Yeah, I guess I, I do too. Yeah, I, do I have too. better yeah, cause I have better, I have better, uh, um, accuracy doing it. Like when I want a headshot, I'm like, bam, and I don't have to, you know, kind of fiddle around with the buttons. I could just hold the R button and uh, line it up quick and then let go. <clears throat> so that that kind of keeps my hands free of trying to, you know, hold the button down and then move the buttons to get through the camera stuff. The motion control just makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Splatoon Two is is real good. I I love it. I I tested out that new the new gun, this the splatter shot. I think the, the mm-hmm. dual wielding uh, splatter shots. Uh, it's a, it's a cool weapon. Uh, that's more for people who are going in for for kills and stuff, though, and and not uh, really ideal for covering a lot of ground and a lot of time, which is what Splatoon is kind of all about, and. Uh, I don't know if you have an accurate player on your team that can take guys out while someone rolls up behind them with a paint roller. I feel like that would be ideal uh, if you're pairing off. But uh, for me, I think it's all about getting as much paint on the ground as fast as possible. Yeah. And, and the paint roller is always going to be my go-to weapon because of that. I know people are going to be like, uh oh, here come the Japanese again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Dude. But, Have you tried to play Splatoon lately? Like, after that test fire, I went back and played Splatoon 1 on Wii U. And, like, man, the, the, the I don't know who I was playing, man, you, but they you, are. You can see the improvements that was yeah. made. Yeah. I don't know, like, who's playing that game, though, over there. But, man, they are so good. Oh, yeah. When I was playing Splatoon uh, with, People when I play play Splatoon with people from around the world, um, it doesn't matter to me if I win or lose. You know, I like the fact that I'm the strategies for everybody is switched up, and you don't know what's going to happen, so everything is up to chance. But it just feels fun because I just be like, okay, y'all fighting over here, then I'll be over here coloring because my thing is, if I'm going to win this, it's not me stopping you guys. It's me covering as much ground as I can. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's I, I, that's why, I mean, again, that's why I use the paint rollers to cover as much ground as I possibly can in a short mm-hmm. amount of time. And uh, it feels a little bit faster. Um, I feel yeah, like... I, I, see, feel like I was the, looking at this. Like, not, not even just the frame rate, but, like, I feel like this, the squids move faster, especially when you're swimming uh through Mm -hmm. the ink i feel like you move a little bit faster um but i don't know maybe that's just because i'm used to other games where you're not moving as fast or like zelda is like like you move at a decent pace but like i don't know it just feels it feels really good Uh, so um i wonder what happened to the two other guys who help make splatoon i I wonder they i wonder they still doing uh splatoon 2 because you remember every time they, they showed those three guys all together making that coming together to make that game, but one of them or someone else is like they're introduced talking about Spatoon 2. I'm like, I wonder where the other two are at. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But what do you say we talk some some E3? Yes. Okay. So two kind of Oh, it's kind of one story, but it's like one A and one B. So uh, Nintendo says they're working on new IP for the Switch. Uh, that's not necessarily for the hardcore, but and they use uh, examples like Brain Age and We Fit as examples to take advantage of the Joy-Con features. And uh, they, it's okay. So here's a quote: uh, Shinya Takahashi. Uh, they said that they're working on brand new IP for the Nintendo Switch. They said they are working on several new games that take advantage of the Joy-Cons and in, in the Switch's unique features. He also said that some of those IP would be, quote, out of the box, uh, something unexpected for a game 
and that, and he gave an example of Brain Age on the DS. He also said that the company is working on games like uh, more games like One Two Switch. Uh, uh, Takahashi didn't get into specifics as to what those games they were working on, but we might see these new IPs at E3. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo's most recent new IP was Splatoon, which was a huge success on the Wii U, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the company is also excited about their new IP, ARMS, uh, which is a fighting game that takes full advantage of the Joy-Con controllers, but you can also use a Pro Controller with that game as well. So, uh, new IP from Nintendo. Always excited to see new IP. I mean, the last two, they they gave us Pikmin and uh, Splatoon, both amazing games. Uh, even smaller titles yes. like Box Boy and uh, Pushmo. Those games are some of my favorite games on the 3DS. So, um, And uh, the Kart Jockey. Yeah. Yeah. That one was good. Yeah. So new IP from Nintendo. Maybe not exactly aimed directly at us, but still exciting. I would I would be down for another Brain Age game though. Yeah, I'll probably bring it back. And it's so funny. People will be like, well, that game is not for me. And then they end up getting it and have to start having all the fun. Yes, people, I'm talking about one two switch. Don't act like you not ha- you haven't been having fun with that game. Because as much as y'all say that it should be a demo, y'all spend a lot of time playing that game having fun. Yeah, I mean, one two switch isn't like the greatest game ever, but it's still if you're in a group setting in the right environment, that game can get pretty out of hand and pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and I know, and everybody's been enjoying snipper clips. So, awesome. uh, you know, that's a big successful, and that's like a very kind of kid, kitten. Don't want, well, yeah, in a way, it's kind of kitty, but get her around adults and trying to get the force them to cooperate to, <laughs> to work a game like that. It they said it's just been hilarious. Yeah, um, it's it's funny because the the game everybody the two games everybody was oh. making fun of the milk the milking the cow milking one and the yeah count, the ball count games are like some of the best games on that thing yeah. and like the the HD rumble really works for that ball count because you can feel like okay if you angle the box this way like the ball rolls down you can feel it. But then the next ball rolls down and you can feel the rumble a little bit higher up from the original ball and you can feel the balls stacking on top of each other. And like it's it's cool, like the HD rumble feature, like it's really cool. I don't know if we needed it, but it is a cool feature to to experience. Yeah, Uh, everybody, if go on Penny Arcade. And I think it's Friday's comic. Uh, they have it where uh, uh, Gail and Tycho are in the movie theater and they're playing snipper clips. And this old man is hearing them. And they're just like, put it in me. Put it in me. <laughs> Go down. Like they're saying it. They're, they're talking very sexual in a way. And a guy think that they're having sex in the movie. <laughs> but they're playing snipper clips. And it's so funny. I feel fell out laughing i'm like oh i want to post this but it won't show up right <laughs> it's such a good it's such a good comic they do uh man snipper clips is a uh, that game's awesome i i love snipper clips so much son and i have been playing i've been playing it and it's 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 super fun i wish there was more i wish there were more puzzles but like that game is super fun yeah but let's uh switch to E3. Oh jeez. Um okay, so before the show we both made lists five expected games to be announced or revealed or re-revealed or whatever. And then five once for the system. And like the once are very pie in the sky, probably not hap- happening. Um but you know, it's something that we would like to see the system do. So, uh, yes, we'll volley back and forth. We're going to do our five expected, and then we'll do our five once. So, uh, Ed, you can go first on your first expected, and then I'll go, and then we'll just keep volley back and forth. Okay, my number five is Dragon Quest 
10. Um, this game is an MMO that never came out to Wii U in Japan. I think they announced it for America for Switch. Uh, so oh, I'm expecting 10 and 11 for Switch. Oh, 10, in oh, Japan. So 10 and 11. Okay, so I think they're going to show more of 10. Um, hopefully, they do show 11, uh, of unless Square Enix got some PS4 exclusive with that. Um, but hopefully, they show off Dragon Quest 10 for. Uh, for the Nintendo Switch, because the Dragon Quest games, even though there haven't been many on uh, as the main game coming out, they do tons of sales on the uh, on 3DS. Um, so it's a, it's good that Nintendo still have that exclusive in a in a way to come, for, you know, to bring that Dragon Quest game, and a lot of people are looking forward to it. So it'll be good to see it on Switch. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to a lot of Square's efforts on Switch. Like, you know, Octopath Traveler looks amazing. Yes. I, I still I feel like that's going to be bravely third. I feel like that's because it's that team, and they have a lineage on Nintendo handhelds already. That that uh, franchise, and so like to play that game. That game. The game looks awesome. Between the the what looks like you know hand painted foregrounds and backgrounds with the sprite based yes. characters oh that game looks awesome and that footage they showed with the like the horse the guy riding the horse and the horse reel reels back it's just it's it's a cool looking game I, I, and you know what I, and i would love for square to continue to bring small rpg games like this to the switch continue to have final fantasy on ps4 keep doing the big productions on those other systems bring those small b teams or second teams uh development of small rpgs to switch in 3ds and you're going to make bank square enix is going to make bank off of that yeah i mean i think i think square would be wise to do little projects because like you see i am setsuna like i think it probably like just based on anecdotal ev evidence and reading stuff on online i feel like i am setsuna sold better on switch than it did on ps4 yeah like in terms of of install base like percentage wise i feel like i am setsuna a sold better and like i plan on buying that when we get paid i'm going to because like i have all my switch games paid off that are coming out through may uh <clears throat> so uh my my money is going to go towards the downloadable games that i haven't purchased yet so like snake pass uh blaster master zero and i am satsuna are the three games that i'm i'm gonna buy in the next i don't know month probably so and, until mr shifty drops <clears throat> yeah until mr shifty gosh that game looks so good oh that, exactly it's the art style man <sighs> it is oh <laughs> so good sorry sorry we had a bro moment right there <laughs> which is like oh <laughs> i know i know but yeah, Square Square is going to do some interesting stuff on the Switch. Uh, I yes. I really want Dragon Quest Eleven because that game looks awesome. They are like they took that art style from Eight. That yes. looks that. I mean, like I know all their games kind of look like that, but it looks a lot like Eight from PS2, and like I'm super into that. So yes. uh, my my first expectation, I feel like Smash is going to be their big announcement. And I think it's going to be uh, kind of uh, a deluxe version of the Wii U version. Uh, I feel like I feel like Smash now could be a, a platform that they can just look every month or two. We're going to give you a new character or a new stage. Uh, the Wii U one is probably I think it was well received by the community. The yeah. The, you know more than than brawl was for sure um it feels a little bit more like melee that like people wanted it to i feel like uh they're gonna release that with all the dlc characters and maybe a couple more stages and characters than we expected uh and then that's when they'll also reconfirm that bayonetta cloud and core and amiibo are also coming yeah. out and they'll they'll all be launched on the same day so. I wonder if they push production back so they can do it for Switch. Probably. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I know everybody all wants those three, but I think Cloud is probably going to sell the fastest. Uh, 
Because people are going to be like, I want that cloud amiibo if the design is right. I don't know. I think a lot of Nintendo fans are going to go more towards Bayonetta because Bayonetta, like that game, yeah. was I mean, so, gosh, Bayonetta I, 2 is so good. Can we please get the ports of Bayonetta 1 and 2 in the next year and then Bayonetta 3 in like a year and a half or two years? I mean, Plat- Platinum Platinum's one game got canceled and the other game's out and doing well, so... It's time for a Nintendo to get back in the in the saddle and say, "Hey, you don't think? Hey, you don't, is coming. Let me tell you, if you don't think Platinum is not working with Nintendo, you are out of your mind." I just, I really hope Platinum is developing Bayonetta three, and like they, I feel like with the popularity of the Switch, if they re-release Bayonetta two on Switch right now, like people would go nuts. Oh yeah. So. I that's I mean that's not an official prediction, but I feel like it's coming. Yeah. I mean it literally won a uh, game of the year when it came out. Yeah. So yeah. uh all right, Ed, what's your next prediction? Uh, what was yours, Corey? Oh what smash. You... Oh smash. Okay. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh my next prediction is the Legend of Zelda DLC. I believe they're gonna show off a little bit, they're gonna tease us chess a little bit of what the winter dlc is going to be about and hopefully with that new story content there's a new land or a little new island where pretty so much more shrines uh and it's probably going to be out of this world bonkers just give me just give me like 30 to 50 more shrines and another dungeon and let me play zelda I think that'd be cool. Shh. No, no, shh. no. Yeah. No, no, because I don't I don't need to sell my PS4 or my Xbox One just yet for that to happen. Because I would literally get rid of both systems. If Nintendo, if Nintendo said for E3, hey guys, uh, thank you for buying the DLC for uh Breath of the Wild. Um, unfortunately, we have to delay it, but we would like to guys show you guys that we have added more content. You guys can now play uh, the Legend of Zelda um, in this Breath of the Wild. Shoot, dude. The Legend of Zelda in the Breath of the Wild engine. I'll be like, how in the heck are y'all going to do this? Or even the, if they do the Legend of Zelda that they did f- to make Breath of the Wild, I would go crazy. The 2D for it. Breath of the Wild uh, prototype that they made? Yeah. Yeah, that would be. I would play that. Cool. That'd be cool. Um, but man, I cannot hand. Trust me, I cannot handle the, the original Legend of Zelda in Breath of the Wild on Breath of the Wild engine. That's another whole four or five years that they need to make. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, that'd be cool though. It'd I want be, every. It'd... I want every. <sighs> okay, we've talked enough about Zelda. I can't go into another rant about how much I want every Zelda game from here on out to be Breath of the Wild. <laughs> no, I just need them to fix The Legend of Zelda 2 and make it less difficult. Get the localization together and stop all that warping. Oh, man. Hey, Corey. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so my next prediction. I feel like I, this might not be E three uh, in particular, but I feel like it's going to be a direct either right before or right after E three. Uh, focus on Pokemon for Switch. I feel like they're a working on the third game in Pokemon Sun and Moon. I feel like Pokemon Stars is coming to Switch, but I also feel like they might be doing a spin off game for Switch as well, and I feel like they will reveal what that game is uh mm-hmm. in some sort of pokemon theme direct uh because pokemon is never ever in a nintendo proper direct they always do their own direct for that uh so pokemon stars and pokemon i don't know i don't want it to be mystery dungeon because i don't really care for those games at all but i know a lot of like kids do and that'll get a new audience in on switch but uh, it'll be something like that. It's going to be a spinoff game and Pokemon Stars both. Maybe not both this year, but I feel like you know Pokemon Stars will be in the fall, and then in the spring they'll release like Mystery Dungeon or something. So, oh, okay. 
or maybe they'll release the mystery dungeon in the fall and then the the big spring game will be pokemon like another pokemon game maybe stars maybe the next one so that's my prediction for pokemon oh, okay well my prediction or expectation is fire emblem warriors i think we will finally get to see that game in action uh, you know, like an actual fight, they'll be able to tell more about the game and then not really give us a release date, but just give us an update more about it. So, Fire Emblems Warriors is mine. I'm excited for that game. For number three, I'm excited for that game. I, just, I want some good butt rock, just like Harbor Warriors. Oh, I love the music of Harbor Warriors. I feel like they could do something really interesting with, with Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, I feel like, you know, Fire Emblem is a turn-based strategy RPG. Yes. But I feel like that that translates super well to a a action-based Fire Emblem game, uh-huh. and like I I just feel like they could do something super interesting with that concept in a full-blown real-time action game. Uh, I don't know. I just I feel like they could do something cool with that. Uh, and that's what makes me excited is like the potential for that game and like if it's just Hyrule Warriors with a Fire Emblem skin on it that's fine I mean I'll take mm-hmm. it but like I feel like there's a lot of cool systems behind the scenes on Fire Emblem that makes Fire Emblem work really well that also translate to this style of game but my third prediction is going to be Pikmin 4 it's in development uh, you know it's they. It's, there's like been a couple Rumors that said that the game is already close to completion. Uh And I feel like that is a solid game for Switch. I feel like, you know, Pikmin's always done well. Pikmin's always been critically received well. And, you know, to have a version of that game on Switch is uh, exciting. So, yeah, not a huge prediction, but it's one I'm excited for. Yes. 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 Well, for my number two is Xenoblade 2. I think they're going to give us a release date, show us more of the world, and probably show us a, a show a battle or two. Who knows? Uh, introduce the characters, um, probably hear some more music, and just see the gorgeous art that the Monolith is known for. I'm just going to be like, good night. Y'all went from Xenoblade Chronicles, X, Xenoblade Chronicles to Xenoblade Chronicles X to breath of the wild and now this beauty i just like you guys are killing it with the art i want to see how they do the open world but with the giant monsters and the giant like because like breath of the wild is super is super impressive open world Mm -hmm. in terms of density but it's all kind of regulated to you know one level like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yes, like it's not a super vertical game. I mean, it is like you're climbing and stuff. It's super vertical, but there's not a lot of huge things that move in that world, you know, like like a monster that you would see in Xenoblade or or Monster Hunter. So like, right to see, you know, that type of open world was in Zelda and have like giant dragons or monsters or mechs move throughout this world on this device. It's yes. going to be super impressive. Can can I just say mention this? Um, if anyone who's playing Breath of the Wild, you might admire this. Um, there's a point where you're almost getting to the first tower in the, well, second tower in the game. Um, and if you while you're looking at it, it's the two big mountains that's like split in the middle uh, with a path. If you just look at it far away. It, it feels like something that Monolith has just designed art-wise. Because when you get closer and closer to it, it just get big, you know, the closer you get to it, the bigger you can't see it and stuff. And it's just like, I want to get my stamina up and climb this just to see where this takes me. Yeah, and, Nintendo and, Nintendo does a, an amazing job and it, like in Monolith to an extent because I know they help design the open world and stuff. Uh, yes. Nintendo does a, an amazing job of like 
hiding the technical limitations in the game by by um, again the art style because you see something really far away and it looks like an amazing painting and as you get closer like you see the details start emerging yes. in the rocks or in the landscape or you know I, and like yeah sometimes there's a little bit of pop in here and there like if there's a horse running like you won't see it until you get closer to the ground it'll just magically pop in but like the the landscapes when you when you get closer you see the details just start emerging nat so naturally and almost unhinged like like you 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 don't and you know what i'm saying like it's it's you just see them pop in so naturally and so amazingly that like uh, uh, like uh, they say they, like they say a clever lies but the perception just like goodness like it looks big far away and then when you get there it actually is big and it's just like i want to see what are what you're hiding in this area because i feel like they just like I, I don't know it just feels like you got something that i need to explore mm -hmm. i may not even get nothing out of it but there's i feel like there's a you're pushing me to make a goal to find out and just in case you might have something that i might need or want so yeah but yeah xenoblade chronicles 2 uh i really need my switch by then for that game to come out yeah it's uh man i'm super excited for that game that game uh i i remember playing the first one on wii and mm -hmm. i was super impressed with it but it came out so late and i was so into uh you know the hd stuff at the time uh and i was i was super into the competitive scene of gears of war uh particularly gears of war 2 at the time and like you know that game was super impressive running on the wii hardware and then again i downloaded it on my 3ds and it's super impressive there and but you know in xenoblade chronicles x how impressive it is on the wii u yes from a technical standpoint uh and I, the fact that you know technically the switch is a more powerful piece of hardware than than the wii u and to to see that you know design and that incredible feat be displayed on a more powerful console is just like oh my gosh i can't wait to see I, these monsters and mechs roaming in the landscape oh Dude, I literally, when they announced that pre-orders were being taken at GameStop, I think I was the only person that did uh, at this particular GameStop that closed. They were the only, you know, I literally went up to him. It was just like, I want to pre-order this game right now. And he's just like, are you sure? I'm like, yes, because once it come out, you people think they're not going to be able, they could just like, no one's going to buy it and stuff. So all that hard work of getting it to come over here won't pay off. Do you know that the trade in value for that game was 90 bucks mm -hmm. more than what I actually almost double what I paid for the game when it came out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I bought it for Wii, I bought it at $60. I traded it in for $90 and then they re released it for $50 when they reprinted it like a month later and I purchased it. So I actually made money on that game. <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, like that game was super hard to find for a long time. And it was it was a GameStop exclusive. Like if GameStop didn't have it, you weren't getting it. Right. And that's why I made sure that I listened and I went up to the dude. I literally left my house, drove 30 minutes to that game. So I'd be like, here's my five dollars to reserve this game. Yeah. Oh, Xenoblade's so yeah. good. I wish like I feel like that game, if if Xenoblade like I feel like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be the breakout uh title for this series because Xenoblade 1 had such had a pretty cult following and then Xenoblade Chronicles X people who bought a Wii U love that game but I feel like the Switch is Switch is reaching a lot more people now and like they're going to see how amazing of an RPG that this game is and that it's just going to this is going to be the breakout title for that that franchise. I feel like it, it has to be. There's no other choice. You know? And like 
and like people are going to want Xenoblade X and and Xenoblade Chronicles One, and they're going to seek out those systems and those games. Like, yeah, it's easy enough to download on 3DS, but like, you know, having a physical copy of Xenoblade Chronicles X, I haven't seen a copy of that game in a long time. You know, I still have some at my store at my job. Okay, well, that's okay. Fair enough. I I literally went at ten o'clock to buy that first day before anybody else, and when that get and it's going to become hard to find. Watch. Yeah, I feel like you know, because we use aren't really in circulation anymore. Like it's there's kind of hard to find right now, yep. and you know people who can't find switches are looking for Wii U's to play Zelda, and you know if they can't find a switch for a while, you know Xenoblade Chronicles X is another great game for Wii U that you should probably pick up. Yes, it is. Um, (laughs) Of course, what's your number two? (laughs) Um, Okay, so this is kind of a big one for me. Uh, Virtual console, I feel like they're going to make it, like this is going to be a big focus of their E3. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, the reintroduction of virtual console, Uh, particularly GameCube games. uh, I feel like they're going to launch with, I, I feel like, they're going to launch with the GameCube launch lineup. You know, I feel like they're going to have Luigi's Mansion, yeah, Pikmin, and Super Smash Bros. Melee as a launch, or, and Eternal Darkness as a launch lineup for their virtual console, and they're really going to push the GameCube nostalgia hard. They're going to... Yeah. Uh, you know, you know I games, would drift, they're going to have I would the, drift the Eternal Darkness into October to, to just be... For like the have that horror thing for October, I will I will hold it back. Yeah, I mean I'm gonna I, I'm gonna buy it as soon as yeah. possible. But like like I already told because my mom is like she's super big on Easter and like she treats Easter like Christmas <laughs> and like it's it's ridiculous how my mom treats Easter. Like my my wife and I got so much stuff for Christmas that we were just like, what do we do with all this stuff? And I was like, I told my mom, I was like, look, I know you're going to want to get us a bunch of stuff for Easter and I don't care what you get my wife, but get me Nintendo eShop gift card so I can buy virtual console games when that thing launches a virtual console. Yes. It's like, I I really want GameCube games in my hand. Like I've even gone out of my way to even re you know, those people mod stuff to make like portable GameCubes or portable uh n64s and stuff like that yeah like i've even gone on my way to research how much that would take to to make one of those like that's how much i love the gamecube nintendo and- has no choice they have to bring out gamecube because people won't f zero let me tell you people want super mario sunshine people want eternal darkness people want that metal gear solid uh twin snakes yeah uh um, they they want that. Um, Tales of Symphonia. They they're going to be one of the games that. Um, uh, they, oh, shoot, they, if they put Smash Brothers Melee on there, it's going to be a done deal. Um, yeah. You know, put the Metroid Prime, the original Metroid Prime games on there, one and two. People will want I'll that. <laughs> and like you know, I I I almost feel like they could almost put Wii games on there too because of the motion stuff, like. You know, this the Switch does so much right with its controllers and its and its UI and stuff that like you could literally put every single generation of Nintendo hardware on there. You could put Virtual Boy on there and they could put make a headset that would support VR and Virtual Boy games. You could put Wii games on there because of the motion stuff and the Joy Cons. You could put DS and 3DS games on there by turning the unit sideways like in a vertical fashion have some sort of you know joy con at the bottom that would support ds and 3ds games and have that like have the screen cut in half and the bottom half would be the touch screen from the ds era and you could have the top like the top half of the screen be the top screen from the ds like virtual console this system is made for virtual console from all eras and that's yes. super exciting uh, I in particular want N64 and GameCube games, but like there's people that ha- that are younger than us that you know the Wii is super nostalgic for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, Wii Sports would be a perfect game to put on this thing. I still think, like, even though they want to get away from the Wii name, like, the best thing about that Wii name is Wii Sports. And if they came out with Wii Sports 2 or, like, you know, Wii Sports Club from from Wii U, like, you know, everybody wants that bowling, even if they made it 20 bucks. Like, there it is. Yes. So, yes. Uh, virtual console is super important to me, especially the GameCube era. Um, you know, I, I really want Metroid Prime. I really want... You know, even Pikmin one and two, I want. Uh, we just mentioned Luigi's Mansion. Mansion. I want because I never got to play it. Um, yeah, you've never played but, Luigi's Mansion. <clears throat> what? Get out of here! You're fired. I didn't have the GameCube game when the uh, game came out. Uh, so when I actually got my GameCube, and when I was trying to find it, it was nowhere to be found. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna get that for you. You need to play it. I'm gonna send it to you. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, so virtual console, uh, you know, I, I really want to play a lot of N64 and GameCube games in my hand, and, and this is mm-hmm. the system to do it, and I'm going to need to order a bigger memory card to do so. <laughs> oh, please, because please, I want Ikaruga on Switch, and if I could turn the screen up uh, just the Switch itself, I could turn it vertical and play like an arcade game, it's on a pop it. Yeah, so uh, that's my uh, second to last prediction or, or expectation, I guess. So, uh, Ed, it's on to your last one. Oh, okay. So my number one, Corey said Pokemon. So, but I came with an emergency, and I and it's going to be a long, sweet, uh, long stretch. But I would like to see another Fatal Frame. I, I, I would love to see Fatal Frame actually come to the Switch. Um, it, it sounds weird, uh, but I, I think the Water Black Maiden just probably needs an upgrade, and it should come. Uh, I would like to be for it to be ported to Switch, or if they decide to go with a new get new uh, Federal Fred game, I think now if they market it well, it would do because it did. I think it did a little bit of good sales. It's probably a little problematic, but I think. You know, it was in a time where horror games were coming back. And with Resident Evil 7 being a big horror game for 2017, I think Federal Frank could uh, somewhat follow that mode, but also just be like, you know, bring that Nintendo horror to us that we want. Yeah. And you are, and like, you already got a camera. What? I think there's a camera in the Switch already. Uh,. I think there is, but I haven't really looked for it. I mean, it, it would be cool for that to happen. If, if the, I mean, if we were talking Pokemon, hopefully Pokemon Snap too, maybe. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, Fiddle Frame would be my, my pick. Yeah. That, that, I, it's a weird perspective, but that's what I'm going for. Yeah, even if they just, you know, that that weird Wii U one that never really came over here, Only it only came here as like a download. Yes. Like I would even take that as for you know something, but uh, yeah, I think Fatal Frame is an interesting concept for a horror game, and I would. I don't really like horror games, but I did like that first Fatal Frame on PS2, uh, so I would totally pick Ooh. up. I mean, I would pick up. I'm. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm going to probably pick up eighty five percent of the games that come out for switch <laughs> and t- I'm picking up a hundred percent of the nintendo published switch games so yeah oh yeah that that's just a given whether it's good or bad shoot i'll bite um i was just thinking of clock uh clock tower oh jeez. or the, the clock tower ooh, or deception deception would be a good time i'm sorry everybody um uh, just to throw it out there, uh, Animal Crossing will probably be a new Animal Crossing might be announced for Switch or 3DS. Um, yeah, probably Switch because 3DS just got that huge update. The 3DS one just got that huge yes. Amiibo update one. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's my expected for E3. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'll move on to my last one. Um, I think... Uh, depending on how the momentum of sales goes with switch and, you know, with Mario Kart and, uh, you know, street fighter coming out in may and Splatoon coming out soon. Uh, 
Arms coming out soon. I still think that game's coming out in May mm-hmm. with Splatoon in June. I feel like they're going to keep that one first party, major first party game coming out yes. each month to keep momentum. Uh, I feel like third parties are going to see the trajectory that Switch is making because you know Nintendo has went from predicting predicting the unit will sell 40 million units to now they're expecting it to sell 110 million units over its lifetime. And that's a giant trajectory. And like, you know, some people might say that's super outrageous, but Nintendo has smart analysts working for them. They're not stupid. Right. Uh, You know, yeah, the Wii U kind of took a backseat, I would say, to the other consoles last generation. But I feel like this is different because, you know, even though they're selling it as a console that you can take with you, for me, the Switch has been the handheld I can plug into my TV. And I think a lot of gamers are looking at it like that as a Wii U 3DS hybrid that they can plug into their TV. And that's what they want. And I feel like, you know, people love Nintendo handhelds and Nintendo handhelds always sell well. So I don't mm-hmm. think, you know, hitting like a 70, 70 million install base is crazy thinking. Uh, I think 110 is a little much, uh, but I don't think like I think, you know, 3DS over the course of five years has sold almost 80 million units. Right. So having this thing hit 65, 70 million units is not out of the realm of possibility, especially if you're looking at it as a handheld device you can plug into your TV. So I think third parties are going to see that. And, you know, this year we might I think feel like third party in particular are going to be watching this thing intently uh, and see how third party games sell on this system, which is why I'm buying a lot of the third party games, even though I'm not super into Skyrim or super into Street Fighter. I'm buying those games because I want to show the companies, hey, look, I want third party games on this thing. So I feel like at E3, we're going to see a lot of third party games shown on the system. I think... I think Call of Duty World War II, which is the rumored title, I think Call of Duty is going to come to the system. I think they're dumb if they don't. I think Assassin's Creed, uh, the new Assassin's Creed game is going to come to the system. Ubisoft always shows strong support, and they have games in development for Switch uh, right now that you know we haven't seen. And they said they're going to show off some huge surprises uh, soon uh, for that. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Assassin's Creed. I'm thinking... Maybe a port of Watch Dogs 2. Uh, I think EA is going to show uh, some things for this, including, you know, I think they're going to release some sport, uh, more sports games for this because people are really excited for 2K18 and FIFA on this thing. Um, and Western third party will be dumb if they don't release this these games to just be like if they if they sit back and do a, a take sit back and look approach japanese companies japanese third parties and indies are going to dominate on the switch yeah and like you already see it in dominated indie scene on the switch like exactly you know binding of isaac is super popular and i see it but a lot of people are like why would you buy that game again but then again i turn around and see in all these nintendo facebook groups i'm in hey Did the Switch convert you to Binding of Isaac? How are you enjoying Binding of Isaac? You know, Shovel Knight got the exclusive uh, timed exclusive campaign on Switch. Uh, You know, Fast RMX is super good. Uh, You know, Snake Pass is going to be great. I think, and a lot of podcasts I've heard, like, everybody wants ukulele on Switch. Everybody, you know, wants a lot of these games on Switch because you can just take it with you and it feels right on the system. So I think, you know, third parties are going to take a look at that and say, well, a lot of people want these games so they can take it with them. And, you know, this is the only place where you can really do that right now until Sony or Microsoft copies them, you know. And and what they don't, what a lot of third parties don't, Western third parties don't realize is that because now that the system is reaching free, if games for Japan are not coming out for, um, for America or, you know, not getting localized, People are going to just make another Jap- go make a Japanese account and buy that. So that's more money 
um, going to those Japanese companies to be like, well, you know, we didn't sell well in uh, Japan, but somehow America is buying a lot of our games. It's going to show that, yeah, you don't want to bring Assassin's Creed. Okay. Um, some indie developer got a good like Assassin's Creed style game. And it's kind of it might be a little bit expensive, but guess what? I'm I'm buy it and be like, wow, it's the number one game in Japan. But uh we thought Japanese people wouldn't buy it, but American people are. It's gonna show Ubisoft to be like, wow, they bought something like that. Maybe we should put something on the switch. Maybe we should we put an Assassin's Creed game on the switch. Yeah, and then like you know, we'll see games like that come over and, and, uh, you know, Capcom specifically asked Nintendo, like, we're not, will you please add more RAM to your system so we can get our engine working on your system? And they did. And now they have the Resident Evil, uh, engine running on Switch. They have the Street Fighter engine running on Switch. And rumor has it the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, uh, engine is now running on switch so that's those are three major titles that you can put on switch that people really want like i know we're not going to get street fighter 5 but street fighter 2 is specifically is super nostalgic to nintendo Trust, i don't think nobody wants street fighter 5 after that <laughs> i know i know but i think them releasing you know a game that a lot of people love in terms of nostalgia retro style fighting like street fighter 2 mm -hmm. and adding some more things to it uh getting that running on switch is awesome i think you know when marvel vs capcom infinite comes out pending you know x-men characters that's going to be the fighting game i want to play <laughs> you know okay. well if cap if capcom happened to get the license back so they could do tokenoku uh tasunoku versus capcom for we download oh that's going to show Capcom that you guys about to have more money in this world come back to you because people who didn't buy the game when it like really sold out and they started printing copies, the uh, the request for the game grew tremendously. So people were selling the game almost for like $150 to $200 because people wanted that game. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so um third party i think is going to have a uh a, a major presence this year but i feel like next e3 de depending on the trajectory of the switch i feel like third party is going to have a major major uh platform next year for switch so i think this year is is going to be a good year for third party and then, you know, next year as Switch starts selling more units and, and does better, I feel like, you know, even if it's not a game that's going to be on Xbox One or PS4, they're going to create experiences specifically for Switch, which is even more exciting. So right. I think we're going to get, you know, I think the next thousand LEGO games, obviously, are going to come to Switch. I still feel like EA might put Plants vs. Zombies on this thing. I'm not putting it past them, honestly. So... Uh, those are just some of my predictions. Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, I think Call of Duty, uh, just because it comes to everything, is going to be on this thing. Uh, which, you know, if if it's WW2 like they say it is, and yeah. it's and it's decent, like I will buy it for Switch. I'll buy a decent Call of Duty campaign for Switch. I mean, I I don't mind playing those games, you know. So. Uh, and the last campaign, Infinite Warfare, was was relatively good compared to the last few years of Call of Duty. So, um, you know, I didn't play any of the multiplayer, uh, you know, and and uh, but the campaign was good. So, but I don't think we're going to see anything like Titanfall there, especially the the way they went off on on Switch and kind of. I, I think. We don't even care about Titanfall to fall too, and I think that's going to be EA response loss because after what they after what people just played with Splatoon two, mm -hmm. come on now. Yeah, I don't and like I don't think the Nintendo audience is like super into that kind of shooter anyway. Like, yeah. you know, Call of Duty Call of Duty's for everyone. Like, but that's that's going to sell fifteen to eighteen million units anyway. Like, you can put it you can put it on a toaster and people would probably purchase it at some point. Oh, it'll um, take a while, but <laughs> look, 
look, uh, Titanfall 2 didn't sell on the other two systems. What makes people think that it's going to sell on Switch? Titanfall 2, not Splatoon 2. Titanfall 2. Yeah, that didn't sell on Xbox One and uh, PS4. Shoot, it wouldn't sell well on on Switch. They want to save their time and resources. That's good and fine. Because Splatoon 2, if it dom- like, if Splatoon 2 and Titanfall 2 came out on the same day, I think Splatoon 2 will outbeat uh, Titanfall 2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, Titanfall is like this weird, interesting concept that never, like, took off it's weird it just never took off and like titanfall one did well because i think it was a microsoft exclusive and like you know they didn't really have anything to play on the console at the time right you know so i think that's why that first game did relatively well compared to the install base but like man i really think taking that game away from being an exclusive hurt that game like that's the one time i could personally say like that taking Titanfall 2 and making it multi-platform really hurt that game because a lot of gamers want to play the, you know, quote, play the first one before they play the second one and PlayStation 4 owners didn't get that and B, Microsoft gamers don't have a lot of exclusives to look forward to and Titan they took that exclusive away and some people soured on that plus putting yeah. it out, plus putting it out between Battlefield and Call of Duty and, you know, the second release of Tomb Raider was like a terrible idea just a terrible idea i don't so, i really don't know what any of them were thinking yeah i don't either but uh, i don't know i don't want to talk too much more about titanfall because i'm still soured at that dev for like i mean like it's okay to be negative about something in a constructive way but if you're gonna just sit there and trash a system that you haven't even played or touched yet because it's you know well, you haven't even developed for that you you haven't developed for or touched or played like that's just that's just wrong and I'm not like I wish I could return my digital copy of Titanfall two <laughs> because of that I mean it's don't get me wrong the story campaign is wonderful I, you know uh in the in the gunplay like I still say it's one of the best in a first person shooter but I'm just like. I don't I don't care if you were, what you was thinking or you was drunk it's it's just that you can't you just can't say anything about a system and think and think that other than the system itself because people are guess what coming to stores buying the system buying more games for it play, uh enjoying and you know like Titanfall 2 didn't change anything so you didn't do good sales, or like I said, you didn't do good sales. Pretty much, people was trying to get it to sell. Um, in fact, when the game came out, maybe like a week and a half after it came out, it was already forty bucks at mm-hmm. different stores and online and online, and even for Black Friday, and the game still didn't sell. I mean, I when I bought it, it was twenty seven dollars on on the X on the Xbox store when I bought it. Wow, and that was like like a week before christmas i think and like it came out in mid-november like that's three weeks i got it for 27.99 and they but, probably haven't even right and they probably haven't it didn't even crack a million or even five or close to five thousand five hundred thousand so if you're going to talk about a system actually make sure that you have a game that sh- that's going to be uh worthy to talk about than the system itself because guess what People are still coming in and getting switches. The yeah. next shipment that comes in is going to be a long line of people everywhere trying to get one. Amazon is still going to be sold out of them quickly. Yeah. To date, uh, according to VG, uh, VG247, to date, Titanfall, this article was written in mid February. Uh, Titanfall 2 wasn't a commercial hit for ea it only sold 1.2 million units across all platforms wow uh so yeah that's i mean if you're putting your game on three platforms you should probably sell a little bit more than that uh even though you sold 1.2 million especially if you're like positioning it as one of your high profile Uh, games like right 
And I bet you from that 1.2 million, it was all sales. Mm-hmm. Everybody didn't pay 60 bu- 60 bucks for that. I bet you people paid 40 or the 27.99. Yeah, I'm sure it, I'm sure like probably I bet at least 60% of their sales were were not full price. Right. Um, and so. you have to sell that game on two platforms, not one. Three, PC also. Oh, three. Yeah, you had to sell uh, on three to get your game to sell. Let's see what you would do if you would have just put that on Xbox or not even Xbox One. How would you? How much would you would do if you just put that on PS4 by itself? Yeah, yeah. I don't and know. that's the and that's the leading system. Yeah, man, that that's a that's a shame. I just. Uh... I don't know. I just I I would really like some cool third party games on Switch, and Titanfall does not seem to be one of them. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I would I would definitely take an Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Watch Dogs style game. You know, I would I would love to see a multiplayer game from Ubisoft. Like I would totally probably dive back into the Division on Switch if I could, and like that's that's coming up in our five once. Uh, for the switch this uh, coming e3 or the future so uh, you want to get started on that and then we'll have this conversation again in about five <laughs> seconds <laughs> so um my first my first wanted game is eternal darkness 2 i would love for uh because nintendo does own the eternal darkness uh license like the name and stuff so i would love to see that get a sequel to be announced yeah um yeah man that would be cool and they could do some cool stuff with like taking the tablet out because they did a lot of weird stuff like you could take the tablet out or like you know it could turn your tv off because if you have a smart TV, it has the ability to do that. Like you, you, you could do some cool things with that. Oh, oh, the creepiness! I could just think, imagine. <laughs> well, Corey, what's your what's yours? Um, Metroid something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> that's literally that's literally what I have written down is Metroid something. Like I would love them to just even if it's just a logo that says, "Hey, we're developing a Metroid game for Switch." Like. I would be okay, like a mainline Metroid game. Uh, we had this conversation uh, like probably four or five times, uh, but yeah. you know, Metroid gave me that single player campaign. Uh, but also, I would not mind if they put that Federation Force style game, refine refine the systems, you know, make it a Metroid Destiny game. Like I would. Be so down for that. Customize a bounty hunter how you want. Give it the powers you want. Go through these, uh, you know, the missions structure that Federation Force had. Like, but make it more like, like basically Destiny how it is now. Like, give us a playlist of strikes to unlock new gear. Let us level up our characters. Let us unlock cool new helmets and and chest pieces and armor and 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 weapons and. Give us a cool Metroid raid where, like, the final boss is this huge Metroid that's evolved into something crazy, or like a Taken King style raid where you're fi- uh, f- fighting uh, Ripley. You know, like, just let us do stuff like that. That I think that would be really cool and give us a multiplayer suite similar to a, I guess, Call of Duty and Destiny are different in terms of multiplayer, but give us that cool Destiny style multiplayer where, like, you know, your weapons and your powers affect how you play your multiplayer. Like, I really think that is a cool idea for a Metroid game, but I don't know. Like, I mean, I, even even three or six months ago, I would have said, I don't know if Nintendo has the development power to pull that off, but like, they did something really crazy with Zelda. Like, yeah. I, I mean, if you're going to do a Metroid Prime style game to do that, or if I would, I wouldn't mind like a Metroid game in the, in the wake of breath of the wild where you're lost on a planet and you go explore these different areas and like even take it a step further where like you need to go unlock certain parts of the map to get those weapons to unlock a different part of the map, you know, 
Uh, uh, I, breaking news, everybody, before you go on, Corey, um, and because you're seeing this Tuesday, so you already know about it. Um, they announced Destiny 2. They got like an actual picture of it, of yeah, like the a, title screen with the two. In the oh, there's like a real title screen and everything? Um, they don't have characters on it. They just have like uh, on their Twitter page, it says Destiny and then the two behind it. Wait, what? Time out. Time out from the podcast. We are going into Twitter. I spelled Twitter wrong. Yeah, so it says Destiny 2 official. Um, they don't show any systems. They just show like a picture of how it looks. Oh. Ooh. That's a very boring logo. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So... But I'm like, it's something we already knew. So it's just like, uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. I I mean, I'm going to get Destiny 2. I really am like uh, excited to move on from Destiny 1. Like they updated a whole bunch of stuff to that game. And I'm just like, why? I don't know. I don't know if Who I can knows? do that. But um, yeah, so if they did like a Metroid style Destiny game or made Federation Force like a feel more like destiny like i liked federation force i'm one of those people who actually liked that game but it was very clearly designed around multiplayer and it was on the wrong platform those were my two biggest gripes about that game was it's clearly made for the wrong platform on 3ds it should have been at the time a wii u game and b yes. it was it was totally does it was totally designed around multiplayer and uh not it didn't scale well to a single player ex experience, especially like once you reach the halfway point, it got super challenging for a single player experience. So those are my two gripes that if you, if you put that on switch and gave it a deeper, you know, armor customization and added some cool stuff to it, I'd be okay with that. I would totally be okay with that. I think Federation force was an awesome experience uh, experiment that Nintendo put out. Uh, but it just needed to be refined and put on a different platform. So yes, sorry. I just I'm a big defender of that game. Uh, I just wish I had friends to play it with. Uh, I need to buy it. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I would wait for a Switch, the Switch version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I I'm sorry, man. I really liked Federation Force a lot, and like, I, oh, who cares that you're not playing Samus? It's a cool bounty hunting experience with your friends, like. Oh, anyways, sorry. That was that was my <laughs> Metroid rant. But I want yeah. Metroid something announced. Uh, preferably a Metroid Prime game with everything I just described. But I will take a Metroid any way I can. So, um, I in uh, retro is uh, uh, expected to show something this year. Yeah. It hasn't been confirmed, but they have to show something this year because they've been working on whatever they've been working on as a new IP. So I think retro games, they have to show something. Uh, but moving on for me, um, Akaruga 2. I would love, I know Treasure doesn't do sequels besides Sin and Punishment 2, but I would love to see them to return back to video games. It's been a while since I played one of their hard arcade style games. And Ikaruga was such a fantastic game. I, I want a sequel to it. And yeah. it would feel, it would fit on Switch just perfectly. So that is my um prediction. That's my number four prediction. Yeah. Um, so if we don't get the Metroid Destiny I want, <laughs> I I would really like Destiny on the Switch. And like, yeah, everybody's laughing, haha. -ha. But I have enough friends that are diehard Nintendo fans that have already said they would like Destiny on Switch. And, you know, friend of NGR, Frank Clark, which I would really love to get him on the show at some point. Uh, you know, we've already talked about if Destiny 2 came to Switch, how cool it would be. Uh, I know you would probably jump in just because it's on a Nintendo platform. Uh, well, you're my boss, so of course. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure... You know, Kyle, if he's still alive somewhere, Kyle, we miss you. Come back. Yeah. Um, um, 
I feel like I haven't talked to Kyle in a long time. Yeah, he he's been wondering about you. I'm just he's just like, I wonder where's Corey up to. I'm just like, he's been busy at working. So um hopefully we'll have him back. He's been doing a lot of school too. Um he's been enjoying his switch. Uh so shout out to you, Kyle. Yeah. Uh from Team Nerd. That's on hiatus at the moment. Yeah. Um Kyle, we miss you. So, uh, but yeah, I would like to see it, Destiny Two come to Switch. Uh, I know that Bungie's engine is uh, light enough to run on a less powerful platform. Uh, we saw because you know Destiny One up until Rise of Iron ran yeah. really ran on Xbox 360 and PS3. And, you know, the Switch is like eight times more powerful than those systems. So I feel like they could do something there. But I guess if you want to continue playing garbage, I guess. I like my garbage, Ed. Let me have my garbage. <laughs> uh, I just, I feel like, you know, either Destiny 2 or The Division or some sort of like, action rpg like that even borderlands to an extent like i don't have a lot of time to sit in my game room and play games properly so like the article i'm writing right now which i had severe writer's block last night uh why the switch is perfect a perfect console for an adult like me like i can sit there and grind on destiny on the switch if i could like i could sit there and grind stuff that i couldn't normally do uh you know i tried doing remote play through the app on my macbook i tried doing the remote play on vita it's super laggy uh you know it's not crisp the button layout on vita is terrible like there's ways to do it but it's just it doesn't feel right and the switch is one of those systems that it would feel right because a you're not relying on an internet connection to relay the game to the system from another place in your house or another place in the world B, uh you're not relying on the crappy wi-fi output that a macbook has while you're trying to grind on that app like i just feel like a game like that on switch is perfect like any sort of grindy rpg that you know you want to like in zelda for example like uh, there's no way i would even be remotely close to beating that game if i didn't couldn't just take it with me on the couch you right. know so i mean it's i feel like these games are all perfect fits for this system and i feel like people you know i i always like i've told some of my friends like the switch is a hands-on experience it's the console you never knew you wanted but once you play it you're never going to want to play games the same again because yes. Like you're gonna, you're able to take it with you. You're able to able to start right where you left off from the TV because there's no hiccups whatsoever once you pull it out of the dock. And what once you want to do, like if you're playing an RPG, you grind on the couch and you take on that big boss on your TV. Like that's, I mean, that's it's the system that nobody knows that they want until they play it. Exactly. And like Destiny, The Division, Borderlands you know jrpgs like final fantasy like even if they ported 10 and 12 hd remasters to this thing kingdom hearts uh, like all those the- games would be just they're they're handcrafted for a system like this and you know i i really feel like those games would fit well in the system so uh destiny 2 is a big one i feel like should be on switch so that's my want my second one <laughs> Yes. So, um, <laughs> the next one for <laughs> the next one for me, my number three is actually I would like to see Wario and Luigi, uh, Wild Luigi, come up with a game. <laughs> I would love to see. I would love to see that. Um, probably a beat 'em up treasure platform game, probably. You know, um, two D sprite, but I I would love to see like Nintendo take on a comedic beat 'em up game and using those two as the protagonist and you know they're just still in riches yeah like they like they like they're still in the coins from bowser 
<laughs> you know, it it would be cool to see it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I would totally do that because like the Mario and Luigi games are so good and so funny, and to add their stupid antics into that writing, yes, it would be so good. Um, so, all right, my third one, Tomb Raider. Whether it's Ri- a Rise of the Tomb Raider port or Shadow of the Tomb Raider or a collection of one and two, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I just I love those games and like. I I really want more, and if I can play it on Switch, that's where I'm getting it. I'm sorry, that's where I'm getting it if it ever comes to Switch. And I feel like, you know, that engine could probably run fine on Switch. I think don't they use a modified version of Unreal, Crystal Dynamics? Um, yes. No, I, I think th- they run Unreal for, uh, Unreal Engine Four. Okay. And uh, so we like, even if it is like a weird modified version of unreal, like unreal works on switch and it would be relatively easy to port down uh, because that's a big selling point right now is that switch is relatively easy to develop for compared to every other Nintendo console. So, mm-hmm. yep. So I'm sorry if, if a game comes to switch, that's where I'm buying it. And I, I, I know. Yeah, and like I know that's not like a super popular opinion, but that's my opinion. If it's coming to Switch, that's where I'm playing it because that's that's now my primary gaming platform is the Switch. I'm sorry. If I can take my games with me, that's where I'm playing it. Amen. I just oh my gosh, I get so fired up about this thing. Like <laughs> just like I don't care if it's less powerful. Like you're gonna have to develop less powerful games for Scorpio and PS4 Pro anyway because they got to run on the lower end consoles anyway. So why not just you don't have to wait an hour and a half to install it. That's also true. Don't have to install the games unless you download it, but then it's already installed once you download it. And like I had an update for Bomberman the other day. It took like 5 seconds to download. Sorry. It was fine. I didn't need to wait 2 hours. Ugh, sorry. That's my other. That's another one of my wants. What's yours, Ed? <laughs> the next one for me is, of course, Bayonetta 3. I need Bayonetta back. 2 was phenomenal. It, it it blew me away. It, you know, even though it came out the year where there was just tons of great Nintendo games, like, coming out the woodworks for it. Bayonetta 2, I mean, just took my game of the year for, I think, t- for 2014. And if I could get three and platinum work with Nintendo again to be like, we want you guys to bring your zaniness again. You know, people love your game. And regardless of we're not worried about sales, we want it on our platform once again. Because Bayonetta 2, I think uh it's the breakout game for platinum. And I and you know, when people say that's um uh near automata is kind of the second best game. That like Bayonetta two from Platinum, this would be hopefully the third, and just want that crazy story, want that great fighting, new weapons, and crazy Nintendo costumes. I I want the comedy back, but I want to feel powerful. Um, I want to go back to that world during which time. Just I want another game, and I hopefully you know I Bayonetta three gets announced or talked about or something. And I, because I think it, a lot of people would be disappointed if it, if people say that, oh, you know, Bayonetta's back on being on PlayStation or Xbox One, I think a lot of people would be disappointed. Yeah. Um, I would really love to see Bayonetta one and two ported to Switch. And then, like, as a, you know, how Sony does it, like, where they release an HD collection to prime you for the next game in the series. Like, yes. You know, uh, so that, I would love to see Nintendo do something like that with uh, particularly Bayonetta, but also like, oh, hey, Mario Odyssey is coming. Let's give you Super Mario 3D World for 40 bucks. Here you go. Um, You know, I would love to see all that stuff. Uh, But yeah, Bayonetta. Gosh. (sighs) So good. So happy. Yes. So good. Uh, check out the Bayonetta 2 review on NGRradio.com if you really want to see how good the game is. Um, Yay. Anyways, my next one 
uh, which I just had a huge conversation with a bunch of people at work today about or yesterday about it. <clears throat> Overwatch, I think it's a particularly solid uh, shooter, and it's got that charm and and fascinating characters that Nintendo has. I think it's a perfect fit, and we know Blizzard has a Nintendo uh, Switch dev kit, so. And I think they've been talking about people and the developers at at Blizzard have been playing the Switch more yeah. than anything else. Yeah, the lead the lead director on Overwatch has said that the Switch is his new favorite platform, and he's working on trying to get this game to run on Switch. He said no promises, but they are working on it, and that would be awesome. Like, yes, I mean the the graphics aren't super intensive, the gameplay like. Even if it runs at 30 frames a second on Switch, like, you know, it runs at 60 on PS4 and Xbox One, but even if you get it to run at 30 at a locked 30, like, there's shooters out there that are great at 30 frames. Halo, Destiny. Yep. Uh, I think even Borderlands runs at 30 on PS3 and 360. Like, there's good, yeah. there's good system or there's good games that run at 30 frames. So if you can get that to run at 30 frames and, like, even if it's 720p, if you want to bump it up to 60 frames, like, yeah, I'm totally down for some Overwatch on on Switch. And the fact that I could take it with me and play, and you know, Nintendo throws them some money to throw in some Nintendo themed skins. Oh, why not? That'd be the definitive. For... That'd be the definitive version of the game because everybody wants those skins. Those are like the main draw of that game is to unlock skins. And if you can unlock Nintendo exclusive ones, yeah. yeah. So Seeing them all in Splatoon outfits, I'll laugh. Or the Splatoon hats. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Overwatch. All right. As well, my number one, this was a, I, I lost my mind when I had the, this discussion. Um, not with Corey, but with uh, Larry from World One One, and we was talking about E3 and Microsoft, and Nintendo happens to come up, and I mentioned a uh, Fantasy Star four, four or five when it came to Switch, but Larry mentioned Fantasy on Fantasy Star Online one and two, if that came to Switch, so I'm going with Fantasy Star Online, uh, and one or two can. And I lost my mind because I'm just like, if this gets announced, that it's a sh- it's it's a shutdown because people would love to return to the Fancy Star universe, and if they could get that going, uh, like if they could do an HD version, or if they bring out a new Fancy Star online game. It, yeah. It's a big sale for not only for Nintendo, but this is big for Sega and whoever helps develop it. Yeah. Yeah. So Fancy Star Online. That's where I'm going with. Nice. I would I would totally play that with you. I'm not gonna lie. Um let's see. My last one. Uh, I kind of was floating around this last one trying to figure out what I really wanted and like what would fit well on Switch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I wrote down that Kingdom Hearts collection that's coming to PS4 in a couple months. It has all of the Kingdom Hearts games up through Dream Drop Distance, I think. Is that the two point? It's the 1.5 and 2.5 remix collection for PS4 that's coming. Uh, I feel like those games, I feel like, you know, that game would fit on Switch really nicely. Because yeah, it's a Kingdom Hearts game that's dropping tomorrow for PS4. Uh, maybe that's the collection. Maybe it is tomorrow. Whoops. <laughs> Maybe it is tomorrow. Well, actually, t- today, everybody, because it's Tuesday, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so I I think that Kingdom Hearts is a solid action RPG. And if they fix a few things that, you know, people have issues with and just kind of streamline the whole thing and, and put 
put it on Switch. Like, yeah, why not? I think people are, would love to take it, that game on the go with them. I mean, the, the ones on 3DS and Game Boy Advance sold super well. Uh, and that's part of, you know, it has a huge fan base on Nintendo platforms already. Uh, you know, that's where you're getting all of your side content, you know, up until this point, like all of your Kingdom Hearts side stories and side content has been coming to Nintendo platforms. So why not just give them one and two, you know, pretty much. And Kingdom Hearts three is running on Unreal Engine four. Just saying, put it on switch. Yay. <laughs> that's true. That is true. I'm just, that's I'm just, just saying, just throwing it out there. Um, so, I mean, I don't think my wants are too out of the realm of possibility. Uh, I think the biggest one is Destiny 2. I don't think would be coming to Switch, but uh, everything else I feel like is pretty tame in terms of wants uh, and are extremely doable. Right. I mean, Activision... Be, to so. me, personally, Activision would be dumb not to include uh, Destiny 2 on Switch. Hey, sorry, you cut out. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, don't uh, Activision would be dumb not to do Destiny Two for Switch. Yeah, I, I just, I really just want everything for Switch. To be quite honest with you, I just, I just want everything. <laughs> uh so. But I think that is our list. So yeah. Um, you know, you guys could check it out. And see Sorry, what you all think this, and let us know. all this, all this Destiny stuff started springing up on Twitter, so I was reading that. Yeah, <laughs> I got, I got distracted. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got to turn off the internet. I got, I just got to turn it off. Um, yeah, so that's our list. Uh, I think, I think everything we listed, even our wants, are doable. Uh, you know, I, I think it's possible. Uh, so I'm, I'm super excited to see what all these companies have to announce for switch in the next coming months. It's exciting that yes. we have so much to look forward to this year on switch already. And the fact that, you know, Ubisoft has already come out and said, we're excited to share what we're putting on switch. Uh, EA has some stuff they want to put on switch, you know, Bethesda, uh, all these companies have, have something to put on the switch. Even Activision is, you know, even though they're into making money, like, the rumor that they're putting their biggest stuff on Switch is, is pretty exciting too. So um, it's an exciting time to be a Nintendo fan. Woohoo, yes. I say that I say that every week, but I feel like the more and more stuff that comes out, the more and more it's true. So hey, Ken Levine just said that he's going to London with his Switch and Zelda. And he asking people, should he take his breath of the wild of me or not? <laughs> that speaks yes. to violence. Yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest game developers in the world, the most one of the most well liked, is talking about Switch and like, yeah, definitely, um, yeah. So, I think that's gonna wrap up our show. I don't think it was as short as I thought it was gonna be, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code. Um, this week, you also guys can read my blogs for optional opinion, and uh, it's on IGN under anime e n i m e. Or just check out Nerd uh, NGR Radio on our Facebook page. I'll be posting the links there. Um, I'm talking about characters and uh, unexpected characters you would think that have changed the gaming industry and other things. So you'll be able to check that out, and you can hear my podcast optional opinion at. Uh, uh, the anonymous radio network dot popping dot com, uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps. It's mostly on SoundCloud right now, uh, but everything will be going to all the other podcasts soon. Um, and also check out my other podcast, World One One at shoutengine.com. World One One podcast. Um, I do it with some good old friends. If we talk video games, we're a train wreck of professionalism. So uh, do check us out there. Yeah. Right on skirmishfrogs.com. Got a series called The Moment, so check me out there also. And you can find me on NGR Radio on the Facebook page, and I'll chat it up with you guys. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. You go uh, uh, check NGRradio.com, I think. Or, yep. Is that the website? Yeah. 
Um, you can check my post, uh, Fresh Freedom Steel. Um, a new blog will be coming up soon. Uh, so do uh, check that out. Yeah. 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 Well, you can find me at Corey Hudson and HD on Twitter, and you can find me at Corey and HD on Instagram. You can find me hanging out in the Facebook group, NGR radio, Facebook group, uh, facebook.com slash group slash NGR radio podcast. You can now follow NGR radio on Twitter as well at NGR radio podcast. You can check out all of our content, including NGR radio every Monday at 10 AM. And this show every Tuesday and Friday at 9 AM Eastern time on YouTube and on your favorite podcast service. Uh, let's see what else. NGRradio.com. There's stuff there that you can read and watch and listen to and everything else. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. And until and yeah. until Friday, we love you. Yes, everybody, we're switching out right now.